Hi there, my name is Fela Durutui, and it is such an honor and a privilege to be able to join you and together celebrate the life and times of your brother, my brother, Ubong Thompson King, the great Ubong King, at this year's Thinkashon 2021 themed Dare to Fly. And I don't know whether you noticed, I didn't say the late. Ubong King. I said the great Ubong King. For we have been able to find out that there is a difference between living and breathing. We've been able to understand over time that yes, whilst lifetime really is a word that describes itself, for time is given to you to be able to accomplish the purpose of your living or your life, that your life existed before time and your life will continue to exist way beyond time. That life is the process of receiving a purpose, of living out your purpose, of fulfilling your purpose, of delivering on your purpose. That's what living is. Living is the process of becoming the best version of yourself, of being all that you were created to be, doing all that you were created to do with all that you've been gifted and therefore creating the impact that you were created to have. That is living. Living is the capacity to continue to impact lives, whether you are breathing or not. And we know for sure that Ubong has joined the, the hosts of the greats, such as Dr. Miles Monroe, Dale Carnegie, and several others, Henry Ford. I can continue to go. People who have continued to touch lives every day with their words, their deeds, their products, and all of their life service, even beyond their breathing exercise. Let's be clear. There are people who are breathing today and yet Jesus described them in the Holy Scriptures as dead. He actually said, let the dead go and bury the dead. Now, if there's anyone who would have the capacity to bury another, that person must be breathing. Which means that what Jesus was saying was, listen, I'm not talking about people who have stopped breathing. I'm talking about people who have stopped living. And how do you know when someone has stopped living? When they are no longer living for purpose when their departure cannot be noticed, when they, uh, their, their presence adds no value, therefore their absence brings no vacuum. That is who a dead person is. Ubong is alive and well, especially in the hands and the bosom of our master. And we can only hope to continue to just keep on doing the work that he started and to continue to see the greatness of his work enlarge until Ubong King and the concept of the troublemaker becomes a true ideology to be able to shake people out of the comfort zone of mediocrity and to be able to challenge each and every one of them to become the greatest and the highest versions of themselves. For that was what Ubong always did. I always describe Ubong King as it's a whirlwind. <laughs> Ubong King comes into a room and you know that power, energy has come into that space. You can't, Ubong cannot pass by you and you will not know that the earth has moved. His words cannot ring in your ear and it will pass by as though nothing was said. Those who are dead, their words mean nothing. Nobody can remember what they've said. Nobody can remember what they stand for. But the great are those whose lives continue to live beyond their breathing. Ubong has defied death. Where is your sting? For he's living today. And this Thinker Sean conference is evidence that until the coming of Christ, the legacy and the legend of Ubong King will continue to challenge people to greatness. And today I really want to just speak towards that, that concept you know, dare to be great, dare to be great, dare to fly. You know, one of the interesting things that it's, we're told, uh, you know, just by study, that the mother eagle, usually she, she, she flies to a very great height to be able to lay her eggs, knowing fully well that, you know, she has to be able to protect them. For all of all the, the birds in the skies, I think the eagle is definitely the king of all birds. And when the eagle mom or the, the eagle mother you know lays her eggs she she finds the tallest tree ever to be able to and many times that tree would be even on top of a mountain and then she lays her eggs and then of course watches them hatch and and she brings food to 
those eaglets um, for a while until she's clear that those eaglets have come to a place where they are ready to fly. Most of the time, she can see the, wing, the, the feathers in their wings that they didn't notice. And at a point in time, she will realize that they are ready. And, and at that point in time, two things happen. Number one is that they have actually become too big for the nest. And if they do not leave the nest, they will fall from the nest at such great heights and fall to the ground, probably to the peril of their death. But then the other very interesting thing is that she recognizes that they will never fulfill their purpose and their destiny, for their destiny is not to be in a nest. Birds were never created to be in the nest. Birds were created to fly. And so uh, the, the, the mother ego understands that there comes a point in time when she has to be able to dare those little eaglets. And I can imagine a conversation going on between the mother and the, and the little eaglets. And, and she says, listen, Iggy, I think it's time for you to fly. And says, mom, I don't know how to fly. I can't fly. And, and the mother says, yes, I know you can. She says, no, I don't know. She says, try, flap your wings. And she says, I don't even know how to flap my wings. And, 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 and so, 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 mommy, please carry me. And we are told that after some time, the mother ego will go towards that little eaglet and nudge it with her beak. And at some point in time, the eaglet will literally begin to drop. And just before the eaglet hits the mountain surface, the rocks, and probably dies, the, the mother eaglet will catch that eaglet and take it back and put it up. And they will try this for a few times until at one point in time, the little eaglet begins to flap the wings and flies away. Most times never to return to the nest, to fulfill destiny and to fulfill purpose. And that's exactly what Ubong has always done. That's what he's doing with Thinkashan. He's literally nudging each of us, taking us to the edge of the places of our comfort to say, flap your wings. Flap your wings. I know you can. Ubong has always said the same thing. I know you can. If I can, yes, you can. If I can, yes, you can. Ubong tells the story of his life in ways that at every point in time you are able to relate wherever you are. You literally, you look at Ubon King and you see yourself. And today he's doing the same thing, challenging us to understand that there is life beyond breathing, that your works can continue to grow, that true legacy will remain long after you've gone to rest. And that yes, there will be people, if you build the right relationships that will continue to stand, not just for you and what you stand for, but to stand with those whom you love. And at this point, I must just be able to say, God bless you, Unime, Evie King, and those amazing kings that are going to take the generation to greatness. We love you. We will continue to just stand by you. But I really want to acknowledge the fact that your strength has been a strength to me. When I was broken down and I was crying on the day that I, I, I was uh, told of of Ubong's passing, it was Unime who strengthened my soul. Unime, may God continue to strengthen you. May God continue to bless you and the kids. May you continue to see the greatness of Ubong King in ways that you had never even experienced it in times past. And so the idea here is very simple. I have a couple of questions that I really want to ask you. And I want to ask you almost, I wish I had the kind of, of, of power that Ubon King speaks with. But you know what? I can never be as good as an Ubon King. I can only be the best Feladorote that I can be. And so I come to challenge you with the following questions. Hmm. If you were guaranteed success, if you had all that you needed to be able to accomplish whatever was in your heart, if you could be given all the resources and all the approvals and you can find the people who will help you, what will you attempt to do? I want you to think about that for a moment. 
If you were guaranteed success, what problem would you attempt to solve? If you were sure that you will not fail, what aspiration would you attempt to bring to realization? For I believe that this is the thing that your breath has been given to you. Listen, the breath or, that you have today is not for the exercise of breathing, it's for the exercise of living. But that's a choice. So with each rising sun, each of us has the understanding that there is work to be done. That purpose is calling you to a higher calling. In a way, Ubong is calling you to dare to fly. That the level that you are operating at was for yesterday. And that you need to attain new heights today. And those new heights will be, essentially, what would you attempt to do if you were guaranteed success? If you had no limitation, what would you try to do? Who has the problem that you will try to solve? What will success look like? How would you measure success? And more importantly, how would success make you feel? For listen, we have come to realize that there are two kinds of success. That there is true success and there is defective success. And defective success is literally what happens when you, you, know, you see someone climbing up a ladder and they get to the top of their ladder and you think, yay, they've accomplished. Only for them to realize that the ladder is leaning on the wrong wall. Defective success is really what happened to my friend when he asked his, his, his steward to go and get him toothpaste. And the guy went for almost an hour and later came back with toothpick. And he was feeling like he had been the most accomplished human being. And for whatever the reason is, because they had a discussion around toothpick the night before, he still thought that it was toothpick that he wanted. But the guy, my friend, had given him money to go get toothpaste. So in the mind of the steward, he, he believed that he was doing the will and the bidding of the master. He thought that he was doing the right thing. The first place he went, he couldn't find the toothpick. Went from there to another place. Finally, just going up and down the place until he could finally find toothpick. And then he said to himself, yes, I have succeeded. He had accomplished the goal that he set for himself. But that wasn't the goal that was set for him by the one who gave him the resources. Defective success is really what happens to someone. And, and this happened again whilst we were in school. A gentleman friend of mine who, who didn't arrive in, in school on time and got somebody else to register some courses for him. Unfortunately, one of the compulsory courses had literally closed by the time my friend was trying to register for this other friend of ours who was still in the UK to join us later back. Final year, second semester, cut the long story short. The, to complete his units, uh, our other friend went and registered him for an elective. And so he had a compulsory course that he did not register for, had an elective that he registered for. When he came back to school, he joined all of us that had been registered for the compulsory course. And he stayed in class, like as though he was registered for it. He wrote the exam. He scored an A. <laughs> most of us, you know, he was one that even taught most of us the course anyways. And so in the end, when it was time for them to compile, the guy had an outstanding in the course that he had registered for and he scored an A in a course that he didn't register for. It was about to become a big problem. To cut the long story short, he had to have an extra year. So he scored an A in a course. He studied for it. He succeeded, but it was defective success. Defective success is what happens when each and every one of us arrives at the balustrades of heaven and we cannot be told, well done, my good and faithful son and servant. Effective success is what happens when you accomplish a task, when you accomplish success in anything other than what you were created to accomplish success in. Let me quickly put it in, in, a, in a sense. Effective or true success is when you have an alignment between your life's mission and your profession and your vocation. And your mission is what you were made to do. It's what you were created to do. That's what you were gifted with talents, with passion, with personality. What your life's assignment is. That's your life's mission. It was given to you before your first breath was taken. 
And it will be the marking scheme for you on the day that you arrive back at the bosom of the master. It doesn't change. You don't choose it. It chooses you. It was for the sake of your mission that you were born. Greatness is where you are able to align that mission with your profession, what you were trained to do. And then, of all good things, when you are now able to align that with your vocation, what you are paid to do. So think about that. You come to the very best of your existence when you begin to earn a fee for doing something that you would have done for free. When you earn a fee, vocation, in something that you have developed and trained yourself, acquired knowledge and skill and expertise, certification and professionalism, that's profession, with what you were created to do, what you're naturally gifted at. You know, I always say to people, when you work hard on what you are naturally good at, you become great at it. When you work hard at something you're not good at, you become good at it. The world has no place for good people. If Ubon King was good at what he does, you would never know his name. Ubon is challenging us today to dare to rise to the level of greatness where we, you and I, can fulfill every of our life's assignment, where we can be the best version of who God created us to be where we can have the best version of the life we're supposed to live on earth, where we can make the greatest impact and leave the kind of legacy with each and every passing day, the things that will stand to walk for us and continue to be a blessing for many other people, even after we've stopped breathing. And Ubong is a typical, perfect example of a man who not just succeeded in his profession or his aspiration, but he had to realign at some point in time and say, my life's mission is not just to build an organization and an institution and put the people there and build the people that will be able to run it. But my life's mission is to trouble the mediocrity in the hearts of men, to shake the people out of their comfort zone of, of, of ordinariness, of average existence and to be able to trouble them to the point where they can aspire for greatness and attain greatness. Oh, my brother Obong, you have done well and you are still doing well. We celebrate you. We love you. We thank you for the gift that you have been, for the gift that you continue to be. I mean, for me, uh, many people don't know, every birthday, I'm sure Unimai knows this, Ubon King will send me a gift. Sometimes it's a goat. But last year, in 2020, Ubon King sent me a cow. A whole cow for my birthday. The cow was so big, they had to take the cow to a farm to keep it there until they could arrange for the days that it would be killed. On the day it was killed, they used a, lorry, a, 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 a van an open back van to bring the things to my house. And you know, we had to be giving out meat. That is a memory that will continue to live with me forever. Every time Ubon calls me, he, as soon as he calls me for the first one minute, we are just, we are just jamming in tongues. We are hailing each other in the spirit. He would say, when Fela speaks, heaven listens. I would say, when Ubon speaks, heaven and earth listen. Those memories will remain in me for a lifetime. And I'm wondering, are you creating memories that you wish that others would recall with joy in their soul long after you have stopped breathing? Let's be like Ubang. Let's dare to fly. And right now Ubang is flying with the angels. And I'm daring you to fly with the great now. Do and be all that God has created you to be. Dare to be great. Thank you, Neme, for having me. God bless you, team. Think of think of Sean. Um, I, I like to say there's a new team emerging called the Team Troublemaker, which I have already signed myself. It's going to be a movement that will shake people into greatness. 
God bless you all. Thank you so much. God bless you, Ubonga. We love you. We'll love you forever. Thank you.